Hello, and welcome to STEAM Kids Virtual Classroom. I'm your host, Peter Romero, science geek extraordinaire, and we are starting a new unit today. Our, our new unit is going to be on weather, which is one of my favorite topics in science, just because it's so applicable to daily life. Um, studying the weather can tell us what to wear in the morning when we leave the house, sunscreen or a winter coat. It can also explain to us um, why it rains, why there are storms, why it's cold or where the wind comes from. It can tell us uh, where the colors of the rainbow come from or why the sunset is red and just a lot of really interesting things. And so, yeah, weather is, weather is one of my very favorite topics in science. And in our first lesson today, we're going to start with something that's uh, maybe one of the most observable, one of the most easily visible parts of weather, which is clouds. Now, to start with, we're going to talk about where clouds come from and how they form and why they exist at all. So what are clouds made of? Clouds are made of um, water droplets or ice crystals, which have condensed in the atmosphere. Now, in any, any place on Earth, no matter how moist or how dry the air is, there is going to be some water vapor in the air, and water vapor is the gaseous form of water. And so in this room right now, there's water vapor. But water vapor, water vapor is invisible. And the, the amount of water that uh, a given uh, parcel of air can hold depends on the temperature of that air and the pressure. And so, you know, the, the air in this room is about room temperature, it's probably about 70 degrees and uh, regular atmospheric pressure and it can, it can, let's say imagine that the air in this room can hold this much water vapor, but it only has this much and so the water vapor stays um, dissolved in the air. But if we increase the amount of water vapor, eventually we'll reach the saturation point of the air. And then if we add more water vapor on top of that, it'll start to condense out into clouds. And so there's a lot of things that can do that in the atmosphere. We can either lower the temperature of the air, or we can increase the amount of water vapor, or we can lower the pressure. And so when clouds form, what usually happens is warm, humid air rises up into cooler air, and then it, ex it expands and it cools, and the water condenses out. And so that can happen in any number of ways. Uh, it's, if it's a warm day, just the heating of the sun can be enough to do that. The sun heats the ground, and the ground heats the air that's right next to the ground, and then that air is warmer than the air above it, and so that warm air rises up into the cool air and clouds form. Another time clouds can form is if a cold front passes through, and a cold front is basically like a, a wedge. So like here you've got warm air out in front of the cold front, and here you've got cold air behind the cold front, and as the cold front comes in, it takes that warm air and it forces it to rise. And when that happens, clouds form, and a lot of times with cold fronts, storm clouds form. And so you get rain and snow and, and hail and that kind of stuff. And um, so yeah. Oh, another way that clouds can form is um, at the surface, and we call those clouds fog. If you have like a rainstorm in the evening and then the sky clears out, and all the heat radiates away and the air cools, then in the morning, the air will be above saturate or below saturation temperature, and so then um, you'll get a cloud right on the ground. And that's what we call fog. So, when you look up at the sky, you might notice that the clouds are different shapes and different sizes, different textures, colors, and all those kind of things. And so, we classify clouds basically into maybe four or five different main categories. Um, the first and probably most recognizable, iconic uh, kind of cloud there is, is a cumulus cloud. And cumulus clouds tend to be puffy. And actually, we, we included some, some cotton balls in your, in your kits. And so I'm going to just demonstrate some of these ki kinds of clouds with the cotton. And you'll see the pictures behind me too. But cotton, I mean clouds, cumulus clouds tend to be kind of puffy, billowy. So just the cotton balls, just plain like they are, are good cumulus cloud representations. And cumulus clouds are associated with uh, generally fair weather. Uh, pretty, they're pretty to look at. Um, if they get uh, larger, if, they, if there's a lot of convection, if the atmosphere is really circulating a lot, then you get cumulonimbus clouds. Cumulus clouds turn into cumulonimbus clouds by getting taller and taller, and then they hit 
a point where they start to spread out to the side. And cumulonimbus clouds are storm clouds. And so out of cumulonimbus clouds, you get heavy rain, thunderstorms, hail, lightning, sometimes even tornadoes, and those kinds of things. Um, the second main type of cloud is a stratus cloud. Stratus, cloud. stratus clouds tend to be more flat. Let's see if I can do this. Um, you know what, I'm just going to rely on the pictures behind me and we'll do our craft later. Stratus clouds are more of the just the featureless gray, overcast clouds. You see if, if it's just overcast all day. They don't really have too much of a shape. They're just layered, just like big flat layers of stratus clouds. And they don't, re they don't usually rain too much. They don't usually have a lot of precipitation coming out of stratus clouds unless they are nimbostratus. Nimbo, nimbus means storm or precipitation. And so yeah, that's stratus clouds. And then the third or the fourth type of cloud that we talk about mainly is cirrus clouds. Cirrus clouds are mainly made of ice crystals. They're a lot higher up in the atmosphere than other types of clouds. They're associated with fair weather before a storm and they look very wispy. They look very, um, I've heard them called mare's tails before, like mare, like a, a horse, just because they have that fibrous, pretty kind of wispy look to them. So cumulus, stratus, cirrus, cumulonimbus, and then within those designations, we also have um, combinations. Like if you have a cloud that's part stratus and part cumulus, kind of, in, kind of a mixture of the two, it's stratocumulus or there's also cirrostratus, cirrocumulus, and then we sometimes use prefixes to tell us how high or low in the atmosphere the clouds are. So if you have plain old cumulus, they're relatively low, but then if you go a little bit higher, you get alto cumulus, or alto stratus, or, or alto, I don't think there's alto cirrus, because cirrus is usually always high. So that's kind of an introduction to the main types of clouds. Now, we're gonna take some of these cotton balls and do our activity. So um, if you have a sheet of blue construction paper or cardstock and a bottle of glue, get those ready and I'll meet you back here in just one sec. All right, so I've got my sheet of blue construction paper here and a bottle of Elmer's glue. And so if you wanna pause the video and go gather some of your own of those things and then come back. Um, now, I mentioned before that these cotton balls are very representative of cumulus clouds, and so it's it's harder to make stratus and cirrus clouds out of cotton balls, so we're gonna make a nice cumulus pattern here. Now the trick to it, you, you could just glue them all down like that, and I guess that's one way you could do it, but I'm gonna be a little more artistic about this, and I'm gonna very gently just start kind of napping these, cum these uh, cotton balls up. Easy does it, because you don't wanna rip them into, into pieces. Just kinda want to Give them some fluffiness. And then once you've got it kind of like that, we can move on and do a few more. And you know what you could do is do several of these for the sky, but then leave this part of the paper empty. And then you could draw a little scene on it, like the ground, a house, anything like that that you want to. It's kind of, <laughs> cotton balls are an interesting thing. I haven't played with them in a while. I think I'll do three, but you can do as many as you want to. You can make this as complicated or as simple as you like. Yeah, and then once you've got the clouds you like, then just move these aside and take your glue and very lightly just Kind of go back and forth over the whole paper here. And then stick them down. I like to, so I, if I have them kind of where they're wider than they are tall, I like to put them horizontally like that so they look like they are actually part of the scene instead of just at random angles. Oh, I think I need a fourth one up here. Fill up some of this extra space. And then, so there's my cloud pattern. 
And then take whatever other art supplies, I don't have a Sharpie down here, but take whatever other pens, markers, anything you want, and then just uh, finish up your scene and you can hang that up on your fridge. So that's been our introduction to cloud types here on Steam Kids Virtual Classroom. Thanks for joining us and we will see you again next week.